This is Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 5.30. Coverage you can count on. New at 5.30, lawmakers have reached a deal to allow more than $7 billion to go toward fighting the coronavirus outbreak. The news comes as the number of Americans killed from the virus hit double digits. Ten Americans uh, have succumbed to this disease, um, and uh, now we have a little more than 100 Americans who have contracted the coronavirus. In Orange County, health officials say they are monitoring 30 people who have showed symptoms, but no one here has tested positive for COVID-19. Meanwhile, lawmakers in Washington are focused on finding the funds to pay for a coronavirus fight, a battle that could hit local communities the hardest. Channel 9 Washington correspondent Blair Miller joins us now live in D.C. tonight. Blair, you spoke with Florida Senator Rick Scott, who has experience, he says, in dealing with this. Yeah, Greg and Martha, I spoke with him at length about this. He told me there are some very specific things that local mayors and governors should be doing right now to help deal with this virus outbreak. I would be saying we need more test kits. New Hampshire Senator Maggie Hassan recalls her days as governor in times like these. She says states and cities need to do a few things. Have test kits available at doctor's offices and clinics. Make sure medical professionals have the proper protective gear and government leaders should track the costs on these things so the federal government reimburses states. Right now we need to make sure that states and local officials are being really clear with us about what their capacity is. Florida Senator Rick Scott also knows the challenges. You know, I had hurricanes, I had Zika. He was governor when the Zika virus swept through a few years ago. He told me there are a few things local and state agencies should be doing right now. What is your biggest one thing of advice to governors or mayors right now? I think the, I think the biggest thing is whatever you know, get it out. Whatever you don't know, tell people. You don't know. He's fielding questions from his own family asking how serious the coronavirus is. He says keeping the public informed may be the best way to avoid any chance of panic. Get information out there, keep the public informed, make it easy to get a hold of you so when the public has questions, you know what they're asking and so you can go get the answer. And we just got word here in the last hour, the House approved that funding bill, so it now goes to the Senate tomorrow and could be signed by the President by the end of the week. We are live in Washington. Blair Miller, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. All right, Blair, thank you. Seminole County Schools taking extra steps as well to disinfect their school buses. This week, the district provided drivers with cleaning supplies, including Lysol spray, wipes, and gloves. They're wiping down areas that students frequently touch. The district wants to stop the spread of germs because of concerns about the COVID-19 virus and the flu. We want the parents to know that we're being proactive in making sure that we can do the best we can to make sure that their students are safe. Uh, we put it on our the district has around 450 school buses. Another team helps clean them at the end of each school day. Well, right now, local stores are trying to keep up with a huge demand for cleaning and sanitizing products. Some customers are finding empty shelves at stores or inflated prices when they search online. Channel 9 anchor Len Keyes found out the state attorney's general's office is now monitoring any reported cases of price gouging. He's live in the studio with us tonight. Len, even though the governor declared a public health emergency, it doesn't necessarily prohibit gouging. Explain this one. Yeah, the gouging statute, Martha, is not triggered by public health emergencies. It normally takes a state of emergency, like during a hurricane, to make it go into effect. Still, the Attorney General's office says it will still pursue clear cases of gouging during this coronavirus outbreak. I think it needs to be taken seriously. You won't catch Maureen McCabe slipping when it comes to staying healthy during this coronavirus scare. She even wipes down her grocery cart. I even wipe the seat part off that I put my purse on. She's a nurse, so she also stays stocked up on the necessities like wipes and sanitizer. You should do that every day of your life. Because every day of your life you can catch a cold or you can catch a virus. You know, it doesn't have to be a big deal like the coronavirus. The virus has led to this. Low supplies on wipes in stores like Publix. And we found the shelf empty of all hand sanitizer in this Orlando location. It's a similar site across the country with sold out signs. And online you can buy it, but the prices can be hefty. On Amazon, a two-pack was going for $84.99. Another seller had a bottle listed for $107.99. Well, that's just pure greed when they do that. The Office of Attorney General told me today our office is reaching out to retailers to help ensure Floridians can afford health-related products. 
and will aggressively pursue any misleading marketing regarding health claims or scams during this public health emergency. It's just one reason, McCabe says, she stays ready. Keep them in the car, keep them in your home. Don't wait for something to be exposed or, or begin like this virus. And the AG's office also says manufacturers and sellers should be forewarned. They will pursue any complaints they find actionable. The office has also reached out to Amazon regarding complaints received about prices on its site. Greg?